Welcome sign. Thanks for joining. I'm Ty Steele. And I'm Leticia Ordaz. KCR3's Melanie Hunter is tracking our forecast for this Thursday. Not as crazy as it's been this last few days, Melanie. Yeah, a lot quieter, which is nice. We get a little bit of a break before we have more wet weather in the forecast. Good morning to you. Welcome to your Thursday start. And we start with a live look across downtown Sacramento here at our Sutter Health Park view. You can see the flags are flapping around just a bit. And that breeze is actually helping to make it feel a little bit colder out there this morning. Our thermometer is reading low 40s across the board in most spots, low 30s in Placerville, single digits in Truckee and South Lake Tahoe. But when you factor in that breeze, it feels like 34 degrees in Modesto. Other spots in the upper 30s like Stockton, Fairfield and Sacramento, upper 20s. That's what it feels like if you're waking up in Placerville and again, single digits throughout the Sierra. So here's a look at that slight breeze that you are seeing up and down the valley. A little bit breezier this morning through Fairfield and through Modesto. There's been a pretty light wind in place through Truckee and and that's helped to allow for some freezing fog to form visibility down to a quarter and under of a mile. If you're traveling along I 80, be prepared for the slick conditions when we talk about freezing fog. And then if you're traveling south of Merced, you're really going to notice that the visibility drops off as you're heading toward Madera. Here's a look at what we can expect today. So upper 30s this morning, a mixture of sun and clouds, and that'll help us gradually warm up to the upper 40s. So a little bit warmer than yesterday, but still below average, still going to feel cool before our temperatures really drop off again overnight. Now we do have a bit of a break from that snow that we were seeing. We got a pretty good amount of snow throughout the Sierra and for that I want to bring in KCR 3s Mike to sell. He joins us from Folsom Lake and Mike today is our first snow survey of the season. And you know, that's usually a key indicator of how we're starting off our official water season. I have a visual example of how we're starting off this water season. We're at Browns Ravine Marina out here at Folsom Lake. And we were standing here just a couple months ago to start the season. Uh, all these docks were on dry ground or mud. Today, because of all that rain we've been having, even some snow melt, uh, this has all those docks now risen as they are now floating on the water. But if history is any guy, don't be too quick to think this means our drought is ending. Let me start with the good news. The first snow survey of this water season will show that the statewide Sierra snowpack, thanks to all this recent snow, is now roughly 160% of average. So 60% ahead of where we would normally be on average. And since December 1st, that means that thanks to all that snow and especially the rain, the lake level here at Folsom has risen more than 30 feet in 30 days. The not so good news for the drought is history. A big start to the season doesn't necessarily mean we're gonna end the water season the same way. After all, going into the first snow survey at the end of 2013, the state snowpack was 137% of normal, but by the end of that season, the snowpack had fallen way below average, just 47% of where it normally would be on average. So back out here live, the bottom line is, while the lake level is rising and there's a lot of snow up there to measure in the Sierra, uh, you know, this snow survey this morning, it's gonna confirm that we have a strong start to this water season, which ultimately determines how much water we have come the drier summer months. But keep in mind, history has proven, just because we start strong, doesn't mean we're going to end strong, so it doesn't yet mean we're on our way out of this drought just yet, but fingers crossed this trend will continue. Now, if you're thinking about driving up into the Sierra to take advantage of all this snow, well, you're going to listen to Brian Hickey because, uh, Brian, I know you are excited to go play in that snow, but is now the time to start driving up there? You could certainly head up there right now, but you will need a four-wheel driver uh, uh, chains. We'll take a look at the uh, maps in just a second on those chain controls, but I was out at Folsom Lake yesterday mountain biking, and part of my trail was underwater. I'll post a video of that coming up on our uh, Twitter page here. Uh, this is what uh, 24th Street looks like on the uh, WX freeway here through Sacramento. Light traffic this morning, no delays here. We are problem-free all across the Sacramento area. So it's a nice time to get out there and hit the road here in the valleys. No fog to report, so that's good news. Uh, just a crisp, clear morning out there for uh, wherever you're heading on Highway 50, Interstate 80, 99, I-5, down through San Joaquin County, Stanislaus County. No reports of uh, any delays there either. Even heading out across onto the uh, Tracy Triangle didn't have any problems. This is what it looks like up at uh, Interstate 80 at Kingville right now. Still very snowy roads up there, and that is why we do have those chain controls in the Sierra right now from Nyack uh, to Truckee. Chain controls on Interstate 80, Highway 50 
empty from Kybers to Myers. And then on Highway 88, we still have a closure from Bear River Road to the Kirkwood Meadows Road. So over the Carson Spur, essentially, that remains closed due to snow. But you can get to Kirkwood from South Lake Tahoe over Luther Pass and over 88 to begin in four wheel drive with snow tires or chains required on that route as well. Back to you. Thanks, Brian. And local emergencies have been declared in both El Dorado and Placer counties due to the winter storms. What does that mean exactly? Well, the proclamation requests state and federal assistance. However, state and federal disasters have not yet been declared. Thousands of people are still without power this morning following this weekend's historic snowfall, and many are being told it'll stay that way for several more days. Could be even longer than that, too. PG&E sent a notice to customers telling them crews will arrive at their homes by January 10th. But that's more than a week away, and many say that's just too late. As of last night, PG&E says more than 48,000 people across the region are without power. We caught up with a few who live in El Dorado County near Sly Park Road. They're using lamps and candles to brighten their home. They do have a generator allowing them to have some power, but they're still frustrated. It just doesn't seem right that they can't get a crew out before January 10th, 15 days without power to assess, not even to try to fix it. Yeah, we can sure understand that frustration. KCRA 3 asked pg e specifically about the January 10th date. They did not directly address it. Instead, they sent us a statement. Part of it reads, given the historic snowfall and unprecedented damage and access issues, pg e has been sending initial estimated times of restoration. These dates are based on initial assessments, and the dates are likely to change as we gain access, survey damage, and continue the restoration progress. Tough for so many people. Mm -hmm. Placer County, the Forest Hill Veterans Memorial Hall is serving as a charging station. People can come in to charge their phones and medical devices. The hall reopens at 9 this morning, and people can use it until 7 p.m. The Auburn Library and Colfax Veterans Memorial Hall are also available today as charging stations.